there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode here on Pastiche of Skin. Yes, we haven't done an episode like this in a while. This is a Derm Discovers. The reason why is there hasn't been that many things for me to discover lately on the internet that I actually want to share with you guys to um, spread around the information to make sure that you guys check it out if it's uh, time limited specifically. And whenever I mean time limited, it's because it's another one of these. Yes, the Humble Bundle is doing another PlayStation Bundle. The last time they did this, it was with Capcom, and I was delighted. I purchased everything. I went for the highest tier. And I end up having duplicates of a number of codes or a number of games that I already owned. But I then shared the codes around with people I knew to actually get the multiplayer. Uh, so I could play with people in Street Fighter games that I hadn't been covered. Or uh, Remember Me or other games that I actually just uh, had missed out on the PlayStation 3 or PlayStation 4 over that particular period of time. So as you can see, there's already been 19,000 copies sold of this bundle. I am one of those 19,000. So uh, yeah, the bundle's only been around for a few hours. I'm trying to get this out as fast as possible so you guys can check it out and join really early on. Uh, 13 days, 17 hours left, so it's pretty much been up for, what, maybe 6, 7 hours. They've only just put it up. And this game's patch is done by THQ Nordic up here. Now, I, I grab hold of every console bundle I can on Humble Bundle and encourage them to buy more of these. I recommend you do the same because they set up deals like this, and it works out a really great... The price is ridiculous in the end up compared to what you'd be paying during any PlayStation Network sale, no matter how flash or how high percentage it is, specifically for PS Plus people, and they end up... Now, of course, they tell you how much. $334 worth of awesome stuff. You pay what you want. And it's redeemable on the PlayStation. Now, the one thing I will say is that it has to be redeemed on an American PlayStation account, which uh, if you don't already know how to do it, I should do a guide for that kind of thing, just how to set up an account from different nations. Um, I have an account set up for everywhere because I play from everywhere, and I have it just kind of works specifically for my main Japan series and other games, and also the fact that you can get yourself some really good games. Now, let's see, look, there's three tiers as usual. There's pay $1, there's... Beat the average with $11.78 at the moment, which will go up, obviously. And then there's the pay $15 mark, which is the top tier, which gives you all the games from below and above. Now let's take a look down here and see what is in the $1 or more mark, which is a book of unwritten tales too. Red Faction, Super Dungeon Bros, Deponia, and Arcania, the complete tale. Now, book of unwritten tales too. Uh, I've never played book of unwritten tales one. But Book of Unwritten Tales 2 has been fun. I already own this game. I bought it a fair while back during one of the sales. I think it was pre-Christmas. And I was in the mood for some really good point-and-click fun. And this delivers. It's entertaining. It's a, it's taking the um, the princess and hero story and popping it on its head. So it's a little bit of Wizard of Oz. It's a little bit of Shrek. It's a little bit of a game that I used to play years and years ago. Pretty sure not many people remember it, called Kingdom O' Magic. Which... um. The premise of you had to actually save the dragon, slay the princess, and rescue the treasure. It was it was an entertaining game, <laughs> to say the least, but it was an FMB game from back in the day. This is not, this is actually a good old-fashioned broken sword, uh, point-click, uh, disc world, uh, Curse of Monkey Island kind of game with um, a fair amount of um, uh, dated jokes now, but very entertaining to play. I haven't finished it myself in the end up. I just kind of, again, too many games to play, so I just didn't finish it. But I would love to get back to playing this a little bit further because point-and-click adventure games are just a really fun adventure novel that you just have to work out some of the puzzles of along the way. So, yeah, I approve of this game. I've already played it and I really enjoy it. Now, the next one, Red Faction for the PS4. Now, Red Faction, this is a remaster re-release for the PS4. This game was out on PS3 for sure. I'm, I'm trying to think, was Red Faction actually even pre-PS3? Was it actually... I can't remember. Red Faction, from what I can remember of the game series, it's big... Uh, moving point was that it had destructible terrain and destructible environments and this of course being the ps4 version means that they've just upped the scale you can destroy a few more things you can make it look a little bit more fragmented it blows up into smaller pieces red faction was a big game on pc as my memory serves because of course it actually had a greater graphical fidelity now having it on ps4 could be a great experience and again it's one dollar one dollar for all these so not, nothing at this tier should ever be considered like not worth your money especially considering you're giving it to charity now, Super Dungeon Bros, I've looked at this game a few times to buy on the sales or whatever. I've just been browsing through the new stuff on the channel because I love a good bit of couch co-op. And we're getting a lot more of that on the game series that we see on the PlayStation Network now. Um, even this month's specific PS Plus games are very couch co-op heavy. And I'm glad to have another one that I can play with my friends. Uh, it means I have more people here sitting on the couch with me rather than sitting playing single player games on my own. And uh, Super Dungeon Bros is, again, a little bit of parody, kind of tricky, kind of uh, versioning of being a top-down dungeon crawler, and I, I, I can't, I can't not recommend it. Again, there's nothing. That, I haven't played this game. All I've seen is just constant footage of it on the PlayStation Network and on YouTube. But at the price line, you, 
I get, what do you have to argue against? What there's a reason why not to grab it? Now, Deponia. I've played this game on PC. Uh, Deponia is another point-and-click adventure. Its art style is endearing as hell. I love the way it looks. But knowing the Deponia series, this is the first in a series of four, I think, going as far as Deponia Apocalypse. So essentially, this is like the first taste is for free. You're going to buy this and get this for this deal. You finish this game, you're going to have a, an arc of the story completed. But this is not the full tale of Deponia. It is it has been extended and continued on long, long after this point. Now, the company that made Deponia, there was actually a little bit of an uproar or complaint about their um, their turns of phrase or some of the insulting nature of the characters in this. I don't know more about that story or otherwise I would comment about it, but it's something that I, I thought I might bring up if you want to search it up and find out more about it yourself. I think it may have been just a case of their not being upset about a lot of things that may not be true or active or they're angry at the company at one point. So Deponia, I recommend it for the art style alone. I don't know how well the humor translates and plays as the game has actually been around for a while. And again, biggest problem with the like, point adventure games is they do tend to have comedy scripts that write themselves into a corner with their time periods. Even though this may be a cool steampunk alternative world, the jokes still apply to being of its own time period. Now, Arcania, the complete deal. I know absolutely nothing about this game, except for that it's an RPG game. It's a, it looks entertaining. I just don't know what it... I don't know, I don't know how it plays. I know absolutely nothing about it. It is the complete and utter mystery gift of this uh, particular part, of the, the, this particular package, of this, like, the $1 level. I mean, I'll throw the trailer on for a conversation while we actually look over at this. Let's see, bring that down. That's not too loud. But um, THQ Nordic, um, not exactly somebody I know for their, like, third-person slash em up RPG adventures, and it doesn't look all that appealing to me. I can just see that this is actually probably one of the games that got released and had its own audience, uh, somebody that was waiting for it to be coming out. But... It kind of reminds me of a, not a brilliant version of Fable, and that's not a really good endearing um, comparison to make, because Fable didn't, I never lit my, my ass on fire, even though it may have been mildly entertaining back in the Fable 2 days. Now, um, that's obviously not lying about what its content is, but it, it is the one game in this that I'm not brilliantly excited about playing, but I will, of course, cover it here on the channel. Now, on to the next tier. This is the middle tier that actually you get for paying over the average. At the current time is $11.78, about £10 to play. Now, Battle Wars Chronos. I have seen this game uh, on the PlayStation Network. Never really kind of got my attention. Uh, it seemed to be almost an RTS kind of like strategy game. Germany's most successful Kickstarter. Obviously, um, they're very proud of it and how quickly they got greenlit. But uh, with uh, gameplay, it reminds me a lot of hex based kind of civilization games, but uh, with base building and combat in the vein of, like, say, a Command and Conquer or the Summer Elk. Now, with a world as simple as this, RTSs don't lend themselves to consoles very well at all. They always feel a bit funky. Even if you're watching this footage, this trailer shows a mouse cursor. This is the PC version being played, so I don't know. Uh, PS4 may not be the home for this, but Battle World Chronos is in this middle pack. Uh, oh, just jumped past too quickly there. Uh, too much of a surprise for you guys. Destroy All Humans, remastered and re-released on the PS4. This game was fucking unbelievably entertaining back in the day. A few of my friends that will actually be watching these videos will obviously remember, stop buttering the wall with that man. Stop buttering it. You play as Chronos. I think it's actually kind of funny because the name of the Chronos is actually the name of the previous game. Let's see, take a look at the name of the character. I just want to make sure I get his name right. Da -da -da, da -da, other side of an alien invasion. Crypto. Sorry, not Kronos. Crypto. Crypto is an alien who's come to destroy all humans, as the title suggests. You probe people. You take over their minds. You steal their cows. You eviscerate them. Essentially, your job is to cause wanton destruction and take over the planet Earth. And because we see one, obviously we see two. Destroy all humans, two is an improvement and always over the first one. So if you're going to pick up one of the games, you pick up the uh, both of the games, it's well worth a playthrough. They, I can't, I think this is actually probably the most joyful, entertaining pair of the bundle altogether that uh, I could recommend. Destroy All Humans 1 and 2 are worth this bundle alone, and they're in the middle tier. So if you're actually a bit light on cash, you can't afford to buy all, everything, I recommend jumping in on this average bundle as fast as you can. 
because these two games are worth it all unto themselves. Now, Legend of K, Anniversary, another game that I actually don't know. Just I'm not on, I'm just unfamiliar with it. It's a game that I never played myself. With um being on the PS3 and PS4, this is one of the few games that are actually cross well between two platforms that you get a copy of both. You essentially get a cross buy where you have it on PS3 and PS4. So if you have an account and you have a PS3 and PS4 in your possession, this is a better deal. It feels like uh, kind of like a, a medieval Asian adventure third person cuddly toy action RPG. Well, not action RPG, action adventure kind of platformer. I, it's one of those things that I, it's a game style that I actually enjoy playing to no end. And the combat looks entertaining. It feels like a, a really hyper kind of like mix of Jack and Daxter with a little bit of Zelda with a little bit of Ratchet and Clank. And 3D platforming sometimes can be entertaining. Well, it can be really, really frustrating because of camera angles. But this seems to be a game that from my previous looks and reviews hasn't suffered from camera problems, it's just uh, it's one of those games that just pass a lot of people by. So I'd recommend giving it a try. It's not it's not um, a massively well-known game to me, but I think it's actually worth checking out. And because it's in the bundle with the Destroy All Humans, you get it as a bonus, added bonus. That's all I'm saying. Because there's not much to really kind of like put me off that game just even by the sight of it. Moving on to the last tier here for over fifteen dollars. Now fifteen dollars, of course, gets you all the tiers all the way through up to this point, and um, this is a mildly underwhelming selection to me personally. Uh, I'm I see that essentially that there's Dark Siders and Dark Siders Two, and you get Dark Siders Two and Dark Siders Two. So you're essentially it's showing you six games, but you're really only getting four because there's essentially two versions of each. Now MTX, oh, sorry, four, three because there are two versions of each. All three of these are on PS3. Uh, the original MX versus ATV Supercross Dark Siders One, Dark Siders Two. Which, as a bonus, isn't normally mentioned. Uh, they didn't actually mention it in this. That Darksiders uh, 1 comes with the soundtrack for Darksiders for your PS3 to download and listen to as well. So you get an MP3 album out of it as well. Now, MX versus ATV Supercross Encore. Of course, it was an upgrade and an increased uh, detail and a PS4 kind of up res, I suppose, really, of the previous game. Now, I think this actually came out in the early days of the PS4 about three or four years ago, so literally a lot of games were built for previous consoles and then just got a mild graphical upgrade onto the next system, and they meant that they weren't purchased as much, but there's a lot of games that end up actually being really enjoyable because of that mild upgrade. Personally, I think one of the best games that actually made that transition across would have been Burnout 3 or Burnout uh, Revenge on the Xbox to Xbox 360. It was one of those games that I just really enjoyed as a activity but i was glad to have it on the newer system just so i could actually uh play it online with more of my friends and to actually enjoy uh, the experience further with a little bit of a graphical upgrade now with the case with dark siders game series i'm not familiar with it blood and gore intense violence and suggestive themes i mean that's that's what dark siders says to me just with its title with its war band edition and uh increased violence and content you know, I, I don't have anything against it by any stretch of my imagination. It's just, it's a, not a, I'm assuming it's actually a spectacle fighter. That's what I recognize it as being. Just a world war. Essentially, the four horsemen of the apocalypse have arrived. And shit is going all the sideways. And you have to fight back the monsters so that they do not ruin the world. Yeah? Pretty much. Can you tell? Did you said you play in Ares? Or, like, in the God of War or so on? Like, that's, is that what you are? Not too concerned. First horseman stands accused of breaking the sacred law by inciting a war between heaven and hell. There you go. That's essentially what it is. And that's Dark Siders One, Dark Siders Two. Obviously, a continuation of the hell versus heaven story thing with, um, of course, suggestive theme, blood, war, and violence. Hey, okay, well, what, what are you expecting to really massively improve from that or continue on, other than just more slashy combat, more big spectacle fighting? This would have been a gear, uh, not a gear of war, a god of war competitor. I know a lot of people who said Darksiders 2 was one of, it was one of their favorite kind of like combat games of its era. So the fact that it's available in this package, I'm sure you'll get it. So the first one was actually what? Ah, it was War, and then this is the Exploits of Death, which was Darksiders 2. So yep, yeah, that was the first. Uh, that's uh, a first from Humble Bundle with uh, THQ Nordic. I'd love to see more bundles like this come out from Humble Bundle on a regular basis. They are always a great deal. It's just the fact that um, you may not know the games, but hopefully you got a little bit of an idea of what they're like from my description of them. Again, grab the $15 bundle. Uh, I always recommend that and throw the money to the charity that Humble Bundle are trying to support. 
give a little bit of cash to the Humble Bundle themselves for putting this together, and of course to HQ Nordic who made the games in the first place. But this is a charitable action. You, you, no matter what, you win, they win, everybody wins. Always a winning deal with Humble Bundle, so make sure to check them out. Thank you very much for watching, guys, and I hope you actually enjoy the games. Uh, remember that this is actually only available to American PSN stores but, or PSN account owners. You need to actually create a free account. It doesn't cost you anything. It doesn't take much time. And they, in fact, do give you a description and explanation of how to open an account here on the Humble Bundle page if you happen to be um, without an account. It doesn't say that if you're doing it from another country, but I will probably put a video together and make it really easy for you guys to do it so in the future. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Thank you very much for watching. And if you see any other videos on the screen that you really enjoy, make sure to hit those as well. And I hope you come back again to Blast Ages again to check out more stuff. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see all you dudes in the next video. Bye.